Hi, my name is Gina Kim, and I am thrilled and honored to be in this week's Spotlight Artist for Art to the Fifth blog. We are in week 31 in our Documented Life project, and I loved our pocket challenge this week. I did a bit of a dumpster diving and repurposed some clear packaging. Um, it was fun to incorporate some sewing on the plastic sheets, and I created little pocket windows for whimsy, um, for hearts and stars, circles and feathers. What makes this project great is that I can now store lovely thank you notes and cards I get in the mail in one beautiful place. So the purpose of this video is to answer the Artist Spotlight questionnaire I received. And I thought, why don't I answer them by doing an art journal flip through? I just completed this visual journal and I'd love to share some of my creative processes and discuss supplies with you as I turn the pages. And also if my voice sounds boring at times, at least you have some eye candy, right? So. Hi, again, I'm Jeannie Kim, and I'm a watercolor artist that happens to do mixed media art as well. But my go-to medium is watercolor. I fell in love with it the day I took a watercolor class at a local community college. That was 12 years ago, and I remember how wonderful and magical it felt to swirl pigment and water on paper. I love the transparency and the prismatic quality of watercolor, and I was hooked. Um, my usual painting strategy is to apply watercolor as the first background layer, and uh, you know whether I do a mixed media piece or a watercolor piece. And probably the most frequently asked question I get is, what watercolors or brand do I use to start out with? I personally use artist grade tube watercolors. The top three manufacturers I like are um, M. Graham, Daniel Smith, and Holbein. I squeeze out the colors I need and fill up the entire well of my palette. Then I set it aside to dry and because these are professional quality, the colors are so easy to activate with water and I can quickly get strong pigment load on my brush. And that's really important to me. So this is a good segue to talk about my must-have art supplies that travel with me. I emptied out a Winsor Newton half pan mini palette um, and squ again squeezed out the colors I want and I include a clear wax crayon for watercolor resist techniques. And the next must-have item would be water brushes. A nice pointed round by Pentel, the Aquash brush, and this quarter-inch flat brush by Derwent. I'm, see that chisel tip is great. I'm sorry it's, it's not focusing here, but this little flat brush is ideal for painting white birch trunks you see here and architectural lines. And I love using salt with watercolor. Salt is the universal texturizing tool. I love how it gives that um, molten look or atmospheric haze and stars. And if you go to my website, I have a short tutorial on watercolor washes and I show you how and when to use salt. I have regular table salt and margarita salt because you never know if you're gonna meet a margarita out in the field. Um, next, I have to carry with me Pigma Micron pens or Sharpie Fine Point in various tip sizes. I need my markers to be truly waterproof, truly black, so that they stand out. And the final little luxury item to have uh, is this cute, cute alphabet stamp set I actually found at Target. It is extremely light and I removed the water soluble dye ink it came with and replaced it with some white and black pigment pads, pigment ink pads. Okay, I'd like to flip back to this page I skipped here. I 
As you can see, I use found paper and envelopes as collage. I love houses. Houses hold such strong meaning for me. And it's important to feel at home, especially at home in the studio. My studio is a converted spare bedroom. I cleaned and organized it once back in 2012. It's never looked this clean um, since. But um, I moved my craft table into the closet and added twinkling lights. I share the studio space with my son, Steven. And he's great. He gives me cheap labor. He's a workhorse. So the one thing that I must have to evoke creativity are gummy bears. I want to point out how I started out with a pound of gummy bears when I started um, shooting the video and it's dwindled down to three. After all the munching and the video outtakes and editing, yes, I have a serious problem. I'm addicted. This is one of my favorite pages. I love boats and I love the ocean. I often um, write inspirational quotes as well. I took Stephen's marker uh, scribbled paper and cut them into animal shapes and he loves when I do that. So this leads to the question of what I want to get better at. I'd have to say it's time management. It is a constant tug of war balancing being a artist mom and I often wonder how other artist moms do it, quite honestly. But at the end of the day, I trust and believe that if I seek what I find uh, that's joyful and, and worthy, even if I make art 15 or 20 minutes a day, that it's not being selfish at all, but it's part of good self-care. And if I can be a role model for that, I know it would set a profound message to my son. You know, it's never a waste of time to seek beauty and search for truth in my work and believe in my dreams and, and, and definitely play with color. My favorite colors right now are bright violet and hot pink. My favorite pens are the white Sharpie water-based paint markers. I have them in various sizes. The bigger round tips are great for dotting, um, you know, making snow or stars or um, galaxy uh, stars, constellations. And there you have it. We've come to the end of my art journal. And lastly, I was asked what my favorite pair of shoes are. And of course, they are the dollar Old Navy flip-flops. They're about half a size too big for me, and I'm constantly tripping in public and in front of people. But you know what? Who cares? They're a dollar, and that's all that matters. So thanks for watching. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm at Gina Lee Kim, and thanks again.